Hey everybody, Leah Klett here, and I'm so honored to be joined today by Reverend Johnny Moore. He is an evangelical thought leader, a best-selling author, and his latest book is on Christian persecution. It is titled The New Book of Christian Martyrs. I'm so interested as to why you decided to write an updated version of this book. You have so much experience in the field of Christian persecution, working with um, the government. Share how this book came to be. Yeah, I mean, look at my own life. I, I owe so much of my my own Christian faith to being exposed to persecuted Christians and to hearing these stories from, from Christian history. I mean, they totally have transformed my life. And I, I sometimes say that I, I'm not sure I would still be a Christian at all had I not um, been exposed to the power of the gospel through um, through those who've suffered suffered for it. And and, and I think it's a very New Testament concept. I mean, when you read the New Testament, you, you can't go three pages without encountering a persecuted Christian or Paul, you know, being persecuted himself or writing encouragement to persecuted people. It's it's so much a part of the Christian uh, Christian experience. And, and I just don't think you can be a fully discipled Christian unless you are being persecuted or are somehow close to those who are. And you know, there are these great stories through history. And one of the most impactful books in all of history is Fox's Book of Martyrs in early America. A lot of homes, if they had books at all, they would have the Bible and a copy of Fox's Book of Martyrs. And and yet it's it's huge, it's difficult to read, it's from another from another era. And so God put it on my heart, you know, seven or eight years ago, a little more than that, to to do another version for a new generation. Um, that uh, exerted um, Fox's Book of Martyrs, but also um, brought it to our modern time mm -hmm. and and integrated other stories of Christian martyrdom, uh, also from the Catholic and the Orthodox um, par parts of the of of Christianity, because as I've learned in in, in you know working with victims of terrorism, uh, the terrorist, uh, they they don't look for the Baptist or the Catholics or the whatever they they just look for the cross and and so we we recorded a lot of those stories too why is it so important for the modern day christian to know these stories you know you talk about how even fox's book of murders it's really it's it's difficult it's so hard to read some of these stories why do we need to know them instead of burying our heads in the sand and saying that's just i don't want that in my mind yeah i mean you know the bible tells us how to be a christian but these stories of sacrifice of persecution and of martyrdom show us the cost of being a Christian. And, and frankly, these are amazing, amazing heroes of our faith. I mean, you, you have uh, children in, 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 in this book of, uh, who, who, who came to faith in Jesus Christ and they um, were given the chance to recant their faith or, and, and live. And they chose not to, I mean, li little kids, 14, 15 years old, you have, these incredibly strong women in Fox's Book of Martyrs in the early in the early church in a time where it was hard enough being a woman, um, but these were women that stood against the full weight of all of society and proclaimed their love and commitment to Jesus, and they and they were thrown to lions and they were burned alive and all all of these all of these horrific things. There's one story in the book of a of a daughter of a very uh, rich figure in in society. She follows Jesus. He begs her to leave it all behind. He goes to the Colosseum to try to get her one last time to leave it all behind, but she but she couldn't. And you know, I, I I've sometimes said that um, that there's so many Christians around the world that are willing to die for a faith that we're barely living to live for. Mm. And and yet, you know, it's the same Bible. It's the same Jesus. It's it's the same same Christianity. So clearly, there are a lot of things that we can we can learn. And for me, it's like a spiritual shot in the arm every time I read one of these stories, whether it's of um, the earliest Christian martyr outside of the Bible, Polycarp, or um, in our modern era of Kayla Mueller or Tom Little or Karen Watson or the Twenty One Cops, all of which are in this in this book. I think that is such an interesting point. You know, we we are so comfortable here in the West. What are some of the dangers of living this very comfortable, lukewarm Christianity that the Bible really does warn us about? Yeah, we, I mean, you just miss you you, you miss the heart of our of our faith, yeah. right? I, I 
you know, the, the beautiful things about Christianity. I, I mean, I, I think uh, our, do our doctrine of grace is a beautiful doctrine. I, I, I actually think um, the implications of the fall are, are a powerful idea because, you know, Christianity is not a faith of the perfect moving from perfection to perfection. It's, it's, it's the faith of uh, a bunch of flawed people who from the very, very beginning um, carry with them the, the weight of this weight of the sin, but of it, you know, Jesus gave his life for us so that we can have new life and he takes us as we are and doesn't leave us there and all of these things. Like there are so many beautiful things about Christianity and so many freeing things about being a Christian. Um, but there are certain things about being a Christian. You might call them secret things about being a Christian that you can only discover when it costs you something. Mm -hmm. And particularly those of us that live in countries where um, uh, the country is majority Christian or where there is mainly religious freedom, uh, where we don't, don't fear for our lives by going to our church on, on the weekends. Um, those are great blessings that we thank God for. And yet at the same token, um, it can cause us to t take for granted uh, the, the, the true, true power of our faith. And so I, I just think by reading the stories of Christians who've had to sacrifice to follow Jesus, sometimes even their lives, uh, it's like having a spiritual awakening in your own individual heart, you know, every, every single day. And, and that's certainly been my experience. There were times when we were writing this book, uh, my, my co-author, Jerry Pattengill, who's a good friend and a historian, um, I, I asked him if he would join me as, as the co-author because uh, these are very important historic texts. And I, I felt like I needed a, a real historian to make sure that we handled them uh, correctly. Um, but there were times when he and I were both writing and passing each other's work back and forth to edit um, that we were just moved emotionally reading these stories. I mean, just deeply, deeply impacted. And that, and that's my prayer that, that, that regular, regular everyday Christians or families or, you know, um, people in Christian schools or homeschools or, 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 or small groups or in Bible clubs uh, and that, that, that these stories become a part of the Christian experience again in the way they were for most of Christian history. Can you share some of the stories that I'm sure it's hard to pick just one or two, but what are some of the stories that most moved or impacted you as you were putting them to paper? Yeah, I mean, that's an, that's an impossible question. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm struck by the, by the martyrs in Lyon. Um, I, I'm struck by, uh, again, Polycarp, who's the, the, big, be, the book begins with Polycarp, who, who's the first martyr outside of the, the New Testament. Um, and here's this old, old, old man at the end of his life in his 80s. And his courage, it's not, it's not just that he, that he died for his faith. It's that the way in which he died for his faith was incredibly, incredibly powerful. There's, there's another um, that woman in, in, in the book that um, I, don't, I don't remember the story exactly, but there was some like cultural custom where uh, if your hair was up or your hair was down, it gave the impression that you um, were less dignified. And as she's being uh, killed in a Colosseum where people are raging at this site, uh, she um, prepares her hair in a way to, to send two messages. One message to the crowd that they can take her life, but they can't take her dignity. Mm. And one message to uh, to God, you know, as she prepared for the end of her own life as to how she entered into heaven. And, you know, then, then you had like um, Tom Little, uh, uh, whose life he invested entirely in Afghanistan, government after government, war after war. He'd been there for 20 years when he and his group uh, went out to, uh, he was an op optometrist. They were helping villagers with their eyes. They were killed by terrorists. And Tom's wife uh, later found the journal that he had used to lead devotions with his team that morning was stained with his own blood. Wow. And uh, she shared that story in, in a, a group in Cape Town in 2010, which I was there for. And you, you couldn't it could, I mean, it was like not a dry eye in the, in the whole, in the whole building. And, and we've recorded some of that, you know, in, in, in the book, uh, you have Karen, Karen um, Watson, who was a, a Southern Baptist who was serving in Northern Iraq. And she uh, was just serving, serving the poor in the middle of the war. And she was gunned down and uh, she had almost like a premonition and she left a sealed letter behind 
for her pastor to only open in the event of her martyrdom. And uh, that the, the contents of that letter are in, in, in the book. So it's just page after page throughout history. Uh, they're, they're just these powerful, powerful stories. They're, they're also stories, though, that we um, can't be proud of. There are plenty of stories in this book where the martyrdom happened at the hands of other Christians uh, in, 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 you know, complicated times of, 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 of church history. And we didn't cover that up at all. We, we, we dealt with all of it from the beginning to the end. Well, what can the modern church make of that? You know, we see so much disunity in the church. Um, it seems like we just, we cannot come together, especially on some of these little theological points. What can we make of that part of our history? You know, our our bickering and backbiting and all, all of these things, it, it's like the luxury of 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 uh, of having a faith that doesn't cost us very much, mm -hmm. and so so we we end up uh, you know fi finding all kinds of excuses to demonize uh, or distrust or cause division, you know, with with the other. And you know, a, a good analogy I, I think is you know all, all of us that are uh, parents, um, you know, one of the things you learn about your children uh, is is you learn that you know a a a a a child that's busy with good things is less likely to get in trouble with bad things, mm -hmm. and and I, I think I think the church is very very often um, not consumed enough with the good news, not consumed enough with serving the poor not consumed enough with being the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And because of that, we end up filling that spiritual, that absence of spiritual zeal up by turning on each other. And uh, there's a reason why the final prayer of Jesus was a prayer for unity. And I'm very, very committed while, while maintaining my own spiritual convictions um, to, to try to do my part, you know, to build that bridge, not only with people who aren't Christians, but among, among the church itself. That's something that's in all of our power. Um, but there are plenty of stories in this book of Christians who killed one another thinking they were doing it in the name of God. Yeah. Now, this was interesting to me. The publisher had to print this book in the United States because it's not safe to print books about Christian persecution in China because of censorship. What can we make of this? And, and how ironic is this? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I, I, it's so, sort of public knowledge that I, I, got crossways with the Chinese Communist Party and managed to get sanctioned um, for my advocacy, uh, actually not so much for Christians, but for Muslims. Uh, and, uh, and one of the things we started discovering as we, as we wrote this book was uh, in the modern era, there are a lot of, a lot of stories um, related to, people don't realize this, but the foremost persecutors of Christians around the world today are not terrorists, okay? It's not ISIS. The foremost persecutors of Christians still in our world are communist. Mm. Okay, so, so this ideology is the ideology uh, that has persecuted more Christians on scale than any ideology in, in, in history. And so, you know, Tyndale House, um, because increasingly they're starting to see uh, that books printed in China are facing a review uh, before they're even printed in China and requests are being made in the way the film industry, you know, has to make edits and all, all of these things. And so the decision was made early on that um, that if we're going to tell the stories of uh, of persecuted people, and particularly you know stories about persecuted people in China, um, that we needed to uh, absolutely print the book in the United States of America. And the truth is, if they saw my name on the book over there, they might not have printed it um, printed it anyhow. And so you know, it's a it's a big book. It's more expensive than 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 some books of its size. But I'm very very proud uh, that you can. You can put a big sticker on the front of this one, uh, ma made in America. Uh, and, and this is the reputation of the United States of America. And it has been for uh, for all of our um, all of our existence. I mean, we have been a place where religious freedom uh, is a top, top priority. And we're a place where it's safe to tell the truth. And we've told the truth in this book. Do you think that's going to continue or is that increasingly being threatened as we're seeing more of this sort of cens censorship around the world? Yeah, I mean, we have to be vigilant on on this issue. I, our our founders they did something profound. Religious freedom is enshrined in the first clause of the first sentence of our First Amendment. Okay, it is the foremost freedom. 
And one of the things that um, that I've heard frequently all around the world in, in persecuted places, some public trips, some private trips, some public meetings, some secret meetings, some meetings in third countries because people weren't safe to meet in their own. And I always hear the same thing, yeah, which is it, it didn't begin here with what we're experiencing now. It began with marginalization, discrimination, and a little pressure here and a little pressure there. And I our kids experience in school or, or started being treated slightly differently in, in, in our jobs. You know, the, the, there always is this slow squeezing of the, of religious freedom of the Christian community and other persecuted communities before it gets grandiose most of the time. Now that's a warning from the persecuted church abroad uh, to people in the West. And yet on the same token, like I am absolutely not drawing a parallel uh, between Christians being beheaded uh, by ISIS or crosses being removed by e at every single church, you know, a, a, across um, whole countries in the world. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not drawing parallels between Christians being beheaded and Christians facing discrimination in the United States. I'm going to say that clearly. Yeah. Uh, however, there is this sort of like weird thing that. Uh, while the consequences are drastically different, the fundamental question is the same. Every Christian that I know who's died for their faith, most of the stories in our book, most of the stories through history, they face this question. Change your beliefs or else. Mm. And while the consequences are totally different and I'm not drawing a parallel um, in that sense, uh, it is worrisome that we have increasing examples in the West of powerful people, governments, of institutions, of businesses, of others saying, change your beliefs or else. And in America, we should always be vigilant about that. And I, I thank God our laws uh, have, 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 in the end, almost all uh, protected our, our religious freedom. Um, but we have to we have to always take the slow squeeze uh, seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Johnny, what would you like Christians in the West to to most importantly know about our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world? Yeah, well, a few th a few things. Like number one, the remarkable thing about these heroes is that they're like most of us. They're just like regular everyday people. You know, these, these are people who just want, like, wanted to live their lives and were faced with these questions. Um, and so these aren't super Christians, okay? These are like regular Christians like the rest of us with their own struggles and their challenges and their fragile faith sometimes that when it was all said and done, uh, they had the courage to, to stand. And so this, this is not a book, this is a book about heroes, but it's not a book about super Christians. Mm -hmm. It's a book about Christians like the rest of us uh, who face di different different circumstances. Um, and, and the other thing I, I would just say is that um, our churches need to be places where the persecuted church is the beating heart of our churches. It is insufficient to have one Sunday a year where you pray for the persecuted church. The, the persecuted church ought to, ought to be a part of every service. Pastors ought to have, you know, there, there are hundreds and hundreds of stories in this book. That's enough for like five years of illustrations for pastor's sermons, you know, so that they can inspire a new generation to, to live for their faith. And if we don't remember these stories, they will be forgotten. And we need to tell the stories to one another. Uh, and, and the persecuted church, you know, they, they, uh, they're strong. Even in the most difficult places, they're strong. Um, but they need to know that we're praying for them and we should pray for their provision for their security we should we you know the bible doesn't um it, you know while the bible celebrates the sacrifice of christians it also celebrates um justice and so while i want to remember and tell the story of martyrs i'm working every single day to make sure there are fewer of them and we can do the same thing you know paul said uh, to, to the church he said pray that we may be free from wicked and from evil people and yeah. so we celebrate the sacrifice of those who had to pay the ultimate price while we fight every day uh, to make sure there are fewer uh, in their footsteps. Yeah, 
It's fantastic. Well, Johnny, thank you so much um, for taking time to chat with me. Thank you for this book. And thank you for raising awareness and drawing attention to these stories. I just think it's so important.